What is crackalackin', ladies and gentlemen? Right here on the desk, we've got a P55 motherboard. It's even got an i7-860 processor, which is worse than the Xeons. And today we're gonna be overclocking it. I'm gonna be taking you guys through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can extract the most value out of these CPUs. Now, the AliExpress Xeons, the X3440s, they're a really good play in terms of value for money. There's the X3430s. All that will apply in today's tutorial if you're buying a cheap P55 or H55 motherboard. Now you can also delid these CPUs as well if you want to use a little bit of liquid metal to get even better temps and possibly more performance. But with that aside, let's start clocking this thing to kingdom come. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and here we have on the desktop, first things first, my two favorite programs for overclocking, Cinebench and also Ida64. You can get a uh, trial with Ida64 for 30 days, links in the description below, it's all you need to overclock, so you don't have to go out and buy a license. It's a really good program, and this here, Cinebench, it's a good program for getting just performance numbers, making sure the final overclock is giving you those numbers that you want. So after you've downloaded both these, we just hit restart, and then we hit that delete or F2, depends on your motherboard. I usually just hit them both at the same time, and we need to get into the BIOS. So now we're in the BIOS, I'm gonna be up in the top right-hand corner here, guiding y'all through this process. And we've gotta go into a motherboard intelligent tweaker. Now, if you're in an ASUS or MSI BIOS, it might look a little bit different, or an ASRock BIOS. Uh, but generally there's going to be all the same settings there and we're going to go through all of them so this is a gigabyte bios and we just have to go to motherboard intelligent tweaker and then from here we uh, click the down arrow on the arrow keys and then we go to advanced frequency settings and click enter now overclocking is best done on a full uh, 104 keyboard with a numpad uh, it's just easier to do that with your right hand uh, so we've got here the i7-960. Now, before we get into this overclocking tutorial, it's important to point out the differences. i7-960 is not, uh, sorry, 860, is not as efficient as a Xeon. A Xeon should, will generally get to a higher overclock on lower voltages because it's a better bin. So basically what that means is uh, if you've got a Xeon off AliExpress and X3440 or something, then you can copy my settings and you should be okay. Uh, but what we've got here on this i7-860 uh, though is, is an extra multiplier. It goes, you can see here it goes up to 22. But the X3440 being so popular has a multiplier of 20 max. So that's what we're going to use here today. And now there's some pretty crazy inverse uh, features. We don't have to worry about uh, these here. The boost tech generally works absolutely fine in my experience. Uh, this one here, C3, C6 state. Uh, I actually like to turn it off because I only really use C1E, which I like to keep on. That just clocks it down to that state when it's not being uh, utilized. So if you go AFK, it's quickly down clocking your CPU. This is the one you wanna keep enabled. Uh, but going back here, QPI clock ratio. I like to keep this on 32 as opposed to 36. That just gives us a little bit more headroom when we're overclocking on the B clock, which is just down here. We can see here B clock, uh, we click uh, enter and then click enabled. And now we can unlock this magical setting here. Now, generally most, I've found uh, most people, so if we hit 190 on our numpad, we can enter. Most people will be able to get to 190 megahertz here. Uh, you should be able to get to 200 though. We'll talk a little bit about that later because it does involve increasing a certain voltage. And this is the one thing about this platform that's different to X58. And this is why I don't like this platform as much as X58. And that's because you can see this uncore ratio here in the middle is just shadowed. You can't control it. And I believe it's the reason why a lot of overclocks just get unstable, especially past 3.5 gigahertz. The uncore is pretty much a hit and miss. You'll see some guys like in their overclocking tutorials locking in 200 here. And they're like, yo, anyone can get this. Uh, but really this uncore ratio, you can see it there, it just changes to 3.6 gigahertz. It becomes unstable on some CPUs. 190 and um, a higher multiplier, for example, will get you to four gigahertz and you won't have to pump as much voltage uh, through the uh, QPI voltage, which is what we'll get onto later. Uh, but for what it's worth, we'll leave that at 20 because we're going for a 3.8 gigahertz overclock initially at 190. 
Uh, now let's go down to system memory multiplier here. Hit enter and hit six. Now we're going to be putting this on the lower setting first. We don't want to mess with memory until we've found how high our CPU can go. Always an important thing. I always recommend doing this. Uh, so once we've set those settings, we can hit escape key, go back a notch, and then go down to advanced memory settings. Because on this board, for some reason, it uh, changes the timings automatically. So we go down to DRAM, timing selectable, hit enter, and then we just go to quick, quick and dirty. That's how generally a lot of people like it nowadays. And we go down to uh, channel A timing settings, hit enter again, and we're just gonna bang in 10, uh, 10, 10, and 30. Pretty generic timings here. And also a command rate of two, just to keep things safe. Again, we don't want memory to be a factor uh, affecting our overclocks. We know it's one less thing to worry about when we're overclocking our CPU. So we hit escape, we hit escape again, get back to this advanced voltage setting. This is important, this one, really important, y'all. Hit enter. Now we go here, load line calibration. I generally like to enable this. I've never had a problem uh, with it enabled. Uh, disabled though, could be causing some issues. Uh, could be uh, V drooping very hard. That's essentially when you like, put your foot on the throttle and you got that initial gap time. Probably maybe if you watch the X58 tutorial, you may have heard me talk about this. Now this is an i7-860. Again, it's not as good as a Xeon. It's gonna need close to like, literally close to 1.4 volt to keep this overclock stable at four gigahertz. So if you're on a Xeon, you might wanna just go to 1.35 volt. You should be okay, especially with load line calibration enabled. But I'm just gonna go for a little bit more because I'm on an i7-860. Now QPI voltage uh, at 190, you're going to want close to 1.3. You just might wanna set this to 1.3 and walk away. Uh, if you're going for 200 megahertz on the base clock, we'll get to that later, you might wanna even go uh, similar to your CPU V core, 1.35 or 1.37. Uh, keep in mind, the higher this setting goes, as you see here, it's in purple because it's getting dangerous. Uh, one point, uh, one point, uh, sorry, off the top of my head. I mean, 1.27 should be okay, uh, but we will just give it a little bit more around 1.3 just to make sure, because again, i7-860, not a Xeon. These voltages will need a little bit more because it's not as good as a bin as that uh, Xeon chip. So, uh, CL, uh, I mean, platform chipset hub, we don't have to worry about that. Again, it's like your input, output, your USBs and stuff like that. Um, CPU PLL, important setting as well, especially since we're going for a bit more on the CPU here. We want to give this 1.86. If you're going for four gigahertz, you may want to give this 1.9, 1.88, but 1.86 should be fine. And then DRAM voltage, 1.5. And we're, gonna, we're good to go. So now we've got our voltages set in. 190B clock means that we have to up this. If you're going down to like 180, you should be okay around these settings. 1.21 should be okay, 1.23. Uh, but because we're going to 190, uh, we should need about 1.3. And we don't have 1.3 exactly, so we're going to go a little bit more. And uh, let's just try lock this in and see if we can get... So we escape, escape, and then we just save, exit, and hit enter, and then we should be going to Windows. So now we've made it into the Windows boot screen, absolutely fine, and again, we did give these voltages a little bit more than we probably should have, but that's because it's an overclock tutorial, and I know there's gonna be people copying my settings here, so uh, we're gonna open up IDA64 here, Left, double click this, open it up, click yes, and we're gonna go for a stress test here. And once we stress test this out, we should be okay. So tools, left click tools, I had a 64 CPU, bring that up, it's gonna tell us our voltages. We're gonna stability test, then we're just gonna hit start. All these selected, very real world. And we're gonna leave that going for 10 minutes. And if it passes, then we don't need to do anything more. If it crashes, then we're gonna go back into the BIOS and do a little bit of troubleshooting again. So now it's 10 minutes and it's finished. It's passed the stress test. It is all good. We're gonna quickly run a Cinebench score just to make sure the results are lining up. Off the top of my memory, we should be getting around close to uh, 600 points. And the score there is right on the money. So let's restart and get back into that BIOS. So here we are back again. We're gonna hit enter and go to advanced frequency settings. 
So now we're here, we're looking for a 200 uh, base clock overclock. So we press 200 on our numpad or we can press plus or minus, it's up to you. And uh, this is essentially like we see here, we're gonna get four gigahertz. But as I said before, that problem of that encore frequency, some people may not be just able to get here no matter how much voltage they pump into their gear, whether it be cooling, is this, uh, whether they have an air cooler or a water cooler, I just find sometimes you just don't get to this 200 megahertz. Uh, that's just my experience. And again, I believe it's because this shadow setting here that we can't touch is affecting our performance. Uh, memory, we're not gonna worry about that yet because we wanna get to the four gigahertz. And I wanna show you what's important. So we go down to the voltage settings here and the CPU should be fine. I mean, I, I jacked this voltage up uh, to 1.375 with load line calibration. Usually that's absolutely fine for a four gigahertz overclock. Uh, usually you can do it at 1.35 for four gigahertz, but because it's an i7-860, it's like literally the worst bin of the four core eight threaded CPUs. So we're going to go, uh, leave that at 1.375 and we should be good at four gigahertz. But this setting here, this is a very important one. So if you've got that higher multiplier, you'll be able to uh, leave this, for instance, you'll be able to go with a 180 and leave this at 1.2 and uh, go for a, like a four point, you know, whatever, 4.1, four gigahertz overclock with higher uh, on an X3470, for example. But because we've got this CPU at 200 uh, megahertz base clock on the motherboard, we literally need to go around 1.35 volt, possibly 1.37, or if your CPU's a lot better, it's a Xeon, it may get there at 1.31, well, around 1.3-ish. Uh, but we're gonna go for 1.35 here, just to test the waters, and uh, we're gonna save that. So they're the two, they're the two uh, very important voltages here. So don't forget that. QPI VTT actually relates to the uh, base clock overclock itself, because you're overclocking more f uh, variables in here, like QPI, uh, I believe Uncore is tied to that, even though it's a shadow voltage and Uncore just caps out too. So once we're ready there, we're gonna save and exit, get back into Windows and see if this passes the stress test. All right, so here we are back in the BIOS and we're gonna get back into MB Intelligent Tweaker, MIT go down to advanced frequency settings. And here we're just uh, trying to tweak the memory a little bit. Now I've got some real mediocre memory. I'm gonna change this here. So click enter on the uh, memory multiplier, go down to eight, hit enter again. And now we're at 1600 megahertz. We can see that it's shadowed in. And uh, this should be okay. We should be able to achieve this. But again, we've got to click escape and go back into advanced memory settings, click enter and go down to here, uh, DRAM timing, and make sure that's on quick, like we did before, and then go to just channel A timings, and we should be okay with these timings. 10, 10, 10, and 30 is pretty generous. Now, if you wanna overclock memory, guys, you can change this to one, you can change this to nine, 10, 10, 10, 28, for example, and you can go from here. Memory overclocking takes a little bit of time to perfectly um, get right, but we're gonna go for 1600 megahertz. Now, if you've got the right memory, you can even up this to 10 and get it to 2000 megahertz. Uh, but we're just gonna go for 1600 megahertz, uh, four gigahertz on the CPU, and that is a very solid overclock if it works, which it should. I haven't had much memory not go to 1600 megahertz. And now here we are on the desktop and basically with memory overclocking, if you get to the desktop, you're really close or you've either made it. Most of the time you've made it, the overclock should be fine. Memory is usually cut and dry. And uh, we can just load up IDA64 again because there's a specific benchmark we can use to test the memory itself. So back in the system stability test, we can just uncheck these boxes here and just go to stress memory. Now you can leave this on for 10 minutes, but again, it should be okay because it did boot into Windows absolutely fine. And with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's overclocking tutorial. Now with these CPUs, they, uh, they top out at about four gigahertz. After that, you need significantly more voltage. Uh, so what we can do here today is we can try quickly before we close out the video, just going for a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. 
But as I mentioned before, if you're having trouble with stability, you can drop a comment in the comment section below or join our Discord server. There's a lot of cool people there that will help you out. A really good community. Also, if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, if you want to get an X3440 or a H55 motherboard, I'll put some links in the description below for you guys and also the links for Cinebench and Ida64. Now, basically with the P55 also and the H55 motherboards and the Xeons, uh, it all comes down to your gear as well. If you've got a really bad power supply, that can affect your overclocks, especially if it's a super cheap budget one that has a lot of ripple. That can be up to 100 millivolts in, in really bizarre cases. So that could affect your overclocks. Also your cooling as well. You always wanna get a decent cooler. Uh, AliExpress have like a $30 cooler that you can use from different CPU to motherboard and get really good value. It's a twin tower cooler, does exceptional performance. Uh, in terms of delidding, you don't have to delid, but it's always a better thing to delid to get those temperatures down. And uh, also if your motherboard has no VRM cooling, you can always just get some really cheap heat sinks and put a fan on those heat sinks as well, especially if your ambient temperatures are pretty hot. My ambient temperatures here today were about uh, 22 degrees. And now with the CPUs, we didn't even go anywhere near uh, 70 degrees. Like we were staying under 70 degrees. That's because I got a water cooler, 240 mil water cooler. And also I have um, a deleted the CPU too and use liquid metal. Anyway, guys, hope this all helped you. Catch you in the next tech video. Peace out for now. Bye.